All right, today's lesson is over uh, 9.4, trigonometric functions. You have to learn a little trig today. We actually should have learned some of this in algebra. You're definitely going to get in algebra 2, and then when you finally have me for pre-calculus and then into trigonometry, you get it. Okay? So we're going to teach you, teach you the basics of trigonometry today, trig functions. All right, so what we have here is called the tangent ratio, and I'm just going to... Uh, kind of tell you what this is used for in right triangles for this class. In right triangles, you can use these things called trig functions to help you set up uh, ratios where you can calculate missing pieces in your triangle. All right. So in Pythagorean theorem, uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I said it was so important for you to understand legs and hypotenuse, which what was what, what the differences were. Okay. And the same thing when we got done, or when we were doing all those things yesterday with uh, the altitude splitting the triangle into two pieces, you had to know what the long leg was, what the short leg was, what the hypotenuse was. It's the same type of thing with this. You have to identify what we call an opposite leg, an adjacent leg, and the hypotenuse. Now, you all know what the hypotenuse is, but the opposite and adjacent leg, they switch uh, from time to time depending on where you're at. So, before I explain that a little bit further, you can write this down, because we're going to talk about uh, all three of these briefly today, specifically the tangent today. Sokotoa. Say it with me. Sokotoa. Everybody say it. Sokotoa. All right. So you're getting kind of three lessons in one. In geometry, we do a tangent, and we do sine, and then we do cosine. So <clears throat> this is what this is. This is called the sine. And we abbreviate it as S-I-N, okay? Okay, and then I'm just going to say sine of theta. That's a theta symbol. It's called theta, all right? And that is equal to, and I'll explain what all this is in a minute, O and H. O stands for the opposite leg over H, the hypotenuse. So this is a way to understand the pieces of your triangle, which one goes with what we're talking about. So the sine is going to have the opposite leg in the hypotenuse. C stands for cosine, and that's abbreviated COS. And the cosine of theta, the A and the H is going to be, A is going to be the adjacent leg over H, the hypotenuse. Okay? That's better markers. And then you have T, which is really what today's lesson is about. The tangent, and again, that is T-A-N-G-E-N-T, -E and we abbreviate it T-A-N. And the tangent of theta, O and A, what do you think those are? What is it? Opposite and adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. Okay? So these are guides to set up a ratio and helps us understand values of things. Okay? Now, what is theta? Theta is the angle of the triangle that we're looking at, the corner of the triangle that we're starting at. Sometimes we may be at this angle. Sometimes we may be at this angle. We're never going to be at the 90 degree angle. Okay? So it's one of two angles that we're at, wherever we put theta. We say, find all the trig functions at angle A. That just means that's where we're starting from. Okay. Now, what does opposite and adjacent mean? So if we use angle A as our theta, the side that is opposite A is that leg right there. That's called opposite because it's not attached. Okay. Adjacent means attached. A and A. Adjacent and attached. They mean the same thing. Okay? This leg is attached, so this is our adjacent leg. If we're at this angle. If we were at this angle, this would be adjacent, wouldn't it? This leg would be attached at that angle, wouldn't it? Okay. And that's true. If we were up here, this would be labeled adjacent and this would be labeled opposite. So it matters where you are in your triangle, okay? And then this is always the hypotenuse. That has not changed in all four lessons, and it will never change, okay? 
So that side is always your hypotenuse. We all good? So again, every, every one of these lessons is about understanding the positions in the triangle. All right, let's go ahead and, so you need to remember SOHCAHTOA. SOHCAHTOA, it lets you know which trig function to use and it tells you what positions to attach to. So tomorrow we'll talk about sine and then co, or not tomorrow, but next week, sine and then cosine, okay? Today is all about the tangent. <clears throat> all right, moving on up. Extra practice. I'm going to blow this up a little bit more for the camera. Oh, uh, wait a minute, what's it say? It says, uh, find the tangents of the acute angles in the right triangle. Write each answer in fraction, as a fraction, and as a decimal. So you have your calculators that you get to use. You get the keys on your calculators called sine, cosine, and tangent. Finally get to use that stuff. Starting to look pretty smart. You feel smart? No? Alright. Alright, and we're going to round those to four decimal places. So when we deal with trigonometric functions, we want to go out a lot of decimal places. So you go out four decimal places. Alright, now let's blow this up. And let's see what we're doing here. So find the tangents of the acute angles. So here's our 90 degree angle. Okay, so we're not starting here. So first, let's start at angle R. And if I say the tangent at angle R, and we'll just put angle R here. First of all, what does tangent stand for? What sides? So Katoa. Opposite over adjacent. So from angle R, our opposite leg is 45, and our adjacent leg is 24. Can I reduce that? I can reduce by 3. So make sure you're always reducing. That gives me 15 over 8. And that can't be reduced any further. Okay, now take the calculators. Take uh, 15 over 8 on your calculator. Oops, the wrong thing there. What do you get? 1.875. Well, now do the tangent of angle S. We'll get to use those fancy buttons on the calculator pretty soon. Okay. We've got to make sure you got the position down. Everybody try angle S. Who set it up properly? 24 over 45. Who set that up properly? Raise your hand. Huh? Oh, that's a great question. 51 is the hypotenuse. Is the hypotenuse in the tangent description? No. You can't use 51. Who actually used Are you saying that because it was adjacent? No. Okay. You're right, it is an adjacent side, it is not an adjacent leg. Hypotenuse is not called a leg. All right, so these two are called legs, and this is always called a hypotenuse. This is never a leg. All right, then we reduce it if you can, and then use your calculator. Reduce it by three again, and that gives me eight fifteenths. Uh, Point five three three three. Remember four decimal places. We got it right. Now some of you are still catching up. Okay. Now number two. Go ahead and set it up. We'll start with, let me just label, we'll do tangent of J first, that angle J, <clears throat> and then we'll do the tangent of angle L. Go ahead and set it up, opposite leg over adjacent leg. Now 
geometry is extremely useful. I would say extreme might be the wrong word. Uh, it's useful in the real world. Okay. You finally get to do a lot of really cool math stuff with trigonometry. All right, tangent of J. Opposite leg is 7. Adjacent leg is 5. here is a radical, but we do have a radical here, square root. So, we're going to do this one. So, we're going to start with the tangent of A first, angle A, and then I want you to find the tangent of angle C. We're never going to find the tangent or the sine or cosine of, of that angle of 90 degrees in this course, okay? Go ahead and set those up. Use your calculators. Yes, that's correct, but you cannot have a square root in your denominator, a radical. So now we must do this thing called rationalizing. So I told you that if you took a square root times another square root, the square root went away, right? This became the square root of 4, right? 2 times 2 is 4, and then the square root of 4 was 2. So whenever you multiply two radicals together, two square roots together, the square root goes away. Okay, but I just can't multiply the bottom by it. I have to multiply the top by the same thing. What is something over itself? One. And what is one times whatever it is you're multiplying by? It's that same thing, isn't it? So I'm not changing the value of it, am I? If I multiply by one? This is why we can do this. It's just not some people sitting around going, hey, let's just multiply by this stuff. There's a math purpose and a reason behind it. So when it, this is called rationalizing your denominator. Whatever your radical is in your denominator, multiply or square root, multiply it by it over itself, and that removes those square root from the denominator. So what do we have on top? Just two square root of two. But if you can reduce those numbers, you reduce them. What's two over two? Okay. So this answer is really square root of two. This is math, guys. We're starting to get to the point where we're, we're going to do some work. All right, I'm going to do tangent of angle C. Opposite over adjacent. And you're done. Who got it right? Okay. All right, so that's how you set up your tangent function. Same thing with sine and cosine, but you have those different legs that you're using in hypotheses. Okay, so when we talk about that tomorrow, that, those, that lesson, or next week, it should be easier to understand after this lesson. All right, let's go on, because right now you're saying, uh, what does that really do for us? I can actually find these angles based on that information you gave me. Because right now, I don't know what those angles are, do I? But I can use trigonometry to 
find those angles, and that's part of what this lesson is. So first, let's see what this is. Find the value of x, round your answer to the nearest tenth. Okay? That's it. Okay. So the value of x, here we go. Here's our degree they gave us. If that's 90, and that's 10, that's 100, this is 80. But we're always going to use the, the angle they gave us. Okay? So if we're at this angle, we're going to say the tangent of 10 degrees, because we're at that angle. And then we set up the problem again. Opposite leg over the adjacent leg. And now this becomes an algebra problem. How do I get x out of the denominator? Let me ask you guys, how is it attached? It's attached by division. So if we multiply by x on both sides, that's the rule. If you multiply by something, you've got to multiply all the terms. Then this x cancels. It really goes to 1. x over x is 1. And so what we have here is x times the tangent of 10 degrees is equal to 5. Now, how do I get x by itself here? Tangent of 10 is, is attached by multiplication, so we're going to divide by the tangent of 10. Again, this is called manipulation. We're manipulating what the thing looks like. So x is equal to 5 over the tangent of 10 degrees. And you say, that still doesn't help me. I don't understand what we're doing. Now take your calculator, clear it, put 5 in, hit division, because we're dividing, and then hit the tan key, tangent, and type in 10, close your parentheses, and hit equals. It says round to the nearest tenth, so 28.4. Did everybody get 28.4? Yes or no? Who did not get 28.4? What'd you get? Uh, I didn't. Let me see what you did. You gotta put the number of the tangent in first. Okay, so let's take that five divide by parentheses. Put the ten in for tangent. And the situation. There it is. Okay. Is Got it? I mean you can use one of ours if you want. Okay. But you understand you gotta put your degree in for the tangent before you get the tangent. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do that to do it. Yeah. Okay, let me see what you got on there. Hit the mode key, go down to where it says radian, and then arrow over to degree and hit enter. Every time you reset those calculators, it puts it in radian mode. Which is going to give you, radians is a little different type of thing. You learned that in trigonometry. Um, so make sure you're always in degree, but whenever you reset it, it will always be in radian mode. So you've got to change it to degrees if we're finding degrees. It'll work like everything else unless you're finding degrees, okay? All right, and then you, do, you, get, you get that. So, that told us this length. What an awesome thing. Because let's say you got to figure out, <laughs> let's say you got to figure out how far something is from you, and you know how tall the structure is, and you want to know how far away you are. You don't have GPS with you, or you can't figure that out. You don't have a, a distance thing on your, on your phone to tell you that. You can use, and you, you're carrying your calculator <laughs> with you, okay? 
You can use trigonometry to find this information. What an awesome thing. How great it would be to be able to tell how far away the moon is from you. How great it would be to be able to figure out how, how, uh, what the circumference of the moon is and the radius and the diameter of the moon is. How do you think they figured that out before they got there? They used trigonometry. Extremely useful stuff. All right, so let's go beyond this. And let's do... Mixture. Okay, let's do this one. It says uh, uh, triangle CDE. All right, and it has to be a right triangle. Angle E is the 90 degrees. So we'll just say this is C and that's D. It doesn't matter which where you put those other ones. Um, and then it says the tangent of C. I'm going to write it right there is four-thirds. And what does tangent represent? Uh, Sokotoa? Opposite over adjacent. So tell me that C, which one, where does the four and the three go? So if we're at C, where does the four go? What What is that segment called? That's right. So 4 would go here, and the adjacent leg would be here. Find the tangent of D. So now we say tangent of D from this angle, what is it? 3 over 4, opposite over adjacent. And we do a lot of things in, in trigonometry where they have to draw a triangle and try to figure things out based on the information given. And it's not difficult, is it? As long as you know your positions. All right. Um, I want to do something before you leave um, about finding the angles, and it doesn't really say this. So I'm going to go back up to one of these and show you how to find an angle. Let's go back up to uh, number three. Okay, I'm going to tell you what this degree is. I'm going to show you how to do this with your calculators. Okay? So you told me the tangent of C was the square root of 2 over 2, right? And what is that on the calculator? Square root of 2 divided by 2 is going to be 0 0.7071. Everybody do it. I need you to make sure you can do this. All right? Okay, now, <clears throat> this is what I want you to do. To get C by itself, we're going to do this thing called the arc tangent. So I want you to take your calculator do this exactly with me. So the last thing on your calculator should be the really long answer here. Okay? So here, watch how we're going to use this. You're going to hit the second key, then hit the tangent key, because that gives you the negative one that's up here, right? That's called the inverse. And now you're going to put that long answer that's, that you had in there, hit second again, and hit that high, uh, not high, the, the negative key here that has the answer on it. And then hit equals. And so that degree is 35.3 degrees. Are you in degree mode still? <laughs> so hit... Or do it this way, hit second tangent, and then just put 0 .70, 0 0.7071 in, and enter, and it's 35.3 degrees. That gives you the degree by doing that. And then therefore, if I know that angle and that angle, I can get this angle by subtracting both those from 180. Okay. Enjoy your weekend, guys. Hope to see you tonight.